Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing another segment from David uh, Jeremiah, and uh, tomorrow we'll get back to Revelations. But today we're going to we're going to do this, and uh, this one is one that I've talked upon stuff like this before, um, remembering who's in control. Um, and so this one here is actually very very meaningful to me. This devotional. Because I do always have to be reminded, God is in control. He knows what's going on. Um, so as Dr. David Jeremiah says here, drop the bombshell mentality. When you think life's out of control, remember who's in control. And uh, that is just so important to remember that with everything going on, especially down in the States right now, um, all the upheaval and around the world, um, we just have to remember God knows what's going to happen. He knows what should happen and, uh, he's in control of it. As this issue of turning points was in production, the news in our world took an ominous turn as the spread of COVID-19 coronavirus that began in Wuhan, China reached into countries around the globe with alarming speed and devastating results from one day feeling safe and secure in our individual lives to having loved ones in danger on cruise ships, senior living care centers, or other locations around the world. This previously unknown virus seemed to come out of nowhere, and we wonder where will it stop. We didn't see it coming. Even now we wonder when will the next bombshell drop, and we've seen so many with COVID dropping and people just freaking out over it, governments overreacting and overreaching with their control, um, using it as an excuse to uh, issue the global reset, as we've seen Trudeau even state. And uh, we just we need to still remember God's, God's in control of what's going to happen. Whether it is an unexpected series of tornadoes devastating neighborhoods near Nashville, Tennessee, during the night, or other calamities that we were not prepared for there are lots of unknowns in our world how can we even sleep at night but that's not all in washington dc the politicians seem obsessed with bombshells of a different sort every day there's a new sort uh, a new shocking report about sensational allegations and dramatic developments of one kind or another which seldom pan out as the hypocrite journalists predict uh, most of the bombshells turn into duds but they raise our blood pressure anyway and distract us momentarily. We're living in a bombshell world in which we've become accustomed to waiting for the next shoe to drop, the next scandal to strike, the next can of worms to be opened, and for the sky to fall. Karen Wall uh, Jorgensen is a professor at Cardiff University who studies the relationships between the media and emotions. She recently wrote, While fear is an emotion that we frequently experience as individuals, it can also be a shared and social emotion, one that circulates through groups and communities and shapes our reactions to ongoing events. Like other emotions, fear is contagious and can spread swiftly. She suggests that the media's tendency to sensationalize and extensively repeat specific reports makes large segments of the population more fearful. Yet such coverage grabs our attention, and many stories are presented as breaking news, adding to the sense of alarm. At a time rife with misinformation, fake news, and conspiracy theories, she said, it is worthwhile remaining alert to the dangers of this contagious emotion of fear in the face of uncertainty. Of all the people on the planet, Christians should fear the least and hope the most. We live by faith and not by sight, not by fright. We should live hopefully, expectantly, not in constant panic. We shouldn't be in a, a bundle of nerves, but a model of Christ. We should expect things from God. Throughout the Bible, the theme of God's remarkable provision recurs like heartbeats. Let me list a few of these great things as an antidote to our fearful age. Expect God's sovereignty. First, we have to keep in mind God's absolute sovereignty over everything. The more you grasp the sovereignty of God, the less you'll suffer the stresses of life. When things seem out of control, we remain under control by remembering who is in control. 
Five times in the book of Psalms we're reminded who reigns supreme. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. Psalm 47, 8. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. Psalm 93, 1. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. 96, 10. The Lord remains, or the Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. 97, 1. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. Psalm 99, 1. In this issue, we often encourage you to memorize scripture. If that's a difficult habit for you to begin, start with these three words, Lord reigns. Those three simple words will remind you of who is in control when the world seems out of control. Expect God's strength. Second, instead of expecting the next bomb to drop, learn to expect God's strength and grace to come to you at just the time, the needed time. James Smith, a 19th century pastor and writer, who once preached a sermon from Deuteronomy 33:25, as your days, um, as your days, so shall your strength be. Reverend said, "This promise is especially suited in the dark days, and wintry days, and trying days, when all our earthly props fail us. However weak you may feel in yourself, however rough the road you may need to travel." However heavy the burden you may have to carry, God will supply you with sufficient strength for the day. Expect God's providential care. Instead of a shell shock, you can also expect God's providential care. Throughout the Bible, the the theme of God's remarkable provision recurs like heartbeats. He provided a son like Abraham, a wife for Isaac, a palace for Joseph, a leader for the enslaved Israelites, manna from heaven and streams in the desert for wandering children of Israel. He gave hope to Hannah, a call to Samuel, and a king to Israel. He provided caves for David to hide in, wisdom for for Solomon, and a pot of oil that never failed for the widow in 2 Kings 4. He fed Elijah with food brought by ravens and gifted Daniel to interpret dreams. God made sure a stable was ready for Joseph and Mary. He provided funds for the Magi for their escape to Israel or to Egypt. Jesus provided bread and fish for the multitudes and eternal life for all humanity. He sent an angel to break Peter out of jail and funds for for Macedonia for the famine afflicted saints of Judah of Judea. Uh, We don't know what news will come today or tomorrow, but we know God is already ahead of us. Will not this same caring God provide you with all you need in dangerous days? In one sense, the very definition of faith is expecting God's providential care to arrive just on time in every circumstance. Expect God's blessings. In addition to meeting our needs, God adds his blessings Numbers 6.24 says, The Lord bless you and keep you. From the fullness of his grace, he sends us one blessing after another. Bruce Gretkowski retired from the NFL after a great football career, and he returned home to Toledo. From there, he started something unusual for a famous athlete, a hospice service in Pittsburgh. He said he wanted to ensure that the sick and aged received quality comfort as they navigated life's final journey. He told his hometown newspaper that he feels really blessed to serve others in this way. He said looking back on his career made him reflect on just how blessed I am and how much God has led the way and opened doors. He added, I have been very blessed. Many NFL stars feel lost when their career is over, especially if the end of their football days comes suddenly from an injury or by being released from a team. It comes like a bombshell, but Gradkowski sees nothing but blessings from God, and his attitude is helping people in life, uh, in life's most difficult moments. Don't expect the next bomb to fall. Expect the next blessing to come. Expect God's guidance. Finally, God's gu- expect God's guidance. We don't know what news will come today or tomorrow, but we know God is already ahead of us living in tomorrow. He knows how to show us what to do, 
Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, tells us to trust him with all our hearts and acknowledge his lordship in every detail, and he shall direct your paths. Jessica Garvin never seriously considered politics as a career, but one night she got a call from someone asking her to run for the Oklahoma State Senate. She didn't take it seriously, but the next day when she told her boss with the call, he said, you really need to think about it. Jessica said, I spent a lot of time praying about it, talking to my family, and there were several God things that provided guidance. For example, one Sunday at church, the Bible lesson was about Second Samuel 7, when Nathan told David that God was going to make him a ruler, and the lesson contained some of the promises God gave David. Don't live by fright, live by faith. It was just too much, and I thought this just can't be a coincidence. Jessica said, That's the way God guides us through our world of panic and politics and personal decisions. He gives us a thought, waters it with good advice, allows us to pray for his leadership, and confirms it with his word. If God can keep the earth on its orbital path, around the sun, spinning at just the right speed, never wobbling, sending us day and night with precision and perfection. He can surely keep us on the right path and guide us into tomorrow. Don't live by fright, live by faith. While while the world is dodging bombshells, you'll be basking in the sunshine and his sovereign strength, providential care, daily blessings, and timely guidance. So I hope that you'll all remember that and uh, that that'll just hammer home what I've uh, stated before, that God is in control and uh, that we need to remember that. And uh, I hope you'll consider sharing this and uh, that you'll hope, hopefully consider following and uh, subscribing to uh, my channel. And uh, I hope this is a blessing for you.